after a tough weekend up north, the Ice Pack returned to the friendly confines of Invisalign Arena for a two-game series against the Texas A&M Aggies. Chris Lehman, Nick Perazzi back with you here on Pack TV as we get set for a great weekend of hockey. Nick, last time we were here together, it was an exciting finish, perhaps one of the most exciting games in recent years for this NC State team. Nick shook the overtime hero with just about a minute left in that three-on-three -three overtime. They pick up the win, but then tough weekend losses to Penn State. Three to two or in the third period came McConaughey with a beautiful shot from the point to tie it and then of course Nick Shook the overtime hero to win it. A beautiful goal it was but going into this past weekend though an entire game but they were able to win three to two with the game winner being blocked going back to the guy who shot it. Right Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop... Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. <laughs> Dine in, pick up, or order on the... Welcome back to Invisalign Arena. Chris Lehman, Nick Perazzi with you as we get set for puck drop. Should be a really interesting combination to see. Yeah, and I think it's going to pan out well. There are three of your highest point scorers on the team. Shook leads the team in points. All his defensive men, Cade Cox, right now at six. Coaching staff for Texas A&M. They've also had their own struggles with it at times. Their penalty or their power play has been very good, but as a young team with some turnover, they do commit penalties. So that is something to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of penalties going on. Sorry, the screaming going on is a little <laughs> distracting. Dark here at Invisalign Arena. We're just about set to get the teams on the ice and get going. So we'll step aside and be right back with more Ice Pack Hockey. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don D. Team Apparel, Tailgating Essentials, Ice Pack Gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State Hockey Team, a percentage of all Ice Pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. online the red and white shop welcome to Mo. at most we've always been inviting but we have a bigger story to tell a place that welcomes you to be you fresh high quality ingredients we got that go ahead do your thing come on let's get weird we don't judge Mo's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites dine in pick up or order on the mo rewards app either way back here to this line we will be back here again tomorrow night with a 7.45 p.m. puck drop. So it should be a good weekend for NC State Hockey. Nick, just about set to get things going here. But uh, I think for NC State tonight, it's going to be a uh, quick start that is going to be important. Well, it looks like we're ready for the national anthem, so we'll throw it down to the ice. We will be the special guest in front of the puck. There's the ceremonial puck drop. A huge shout out, of course, to Cameron Gurkin. A tough fight, of course.
is the national anthem. We're set to roll here at Invisalign Arena. Chris Lehman, Nick Parasi with you as we get set to get things rolling. Let's take a quick look at the starting lineups up front for the Aggies of Texas A&M University. Jacob Smith along with Christian Spearman and Marshall Rushing. We mentioned Rushing going to be a guy to keep an eye on on the offensive end for the Aggies tonight. On the back end, Jacob, that pass through some skates all the way to the far side. Thronson knocked off the puck. AM gets to it at the blue line. Here's a chance in tight. Big save made by Toyer on the quick shot from Smith. So Toyer up to the task on the first shot of the game. Good pressure here from the Aggies. NC State will get to it. Holden Kaufman in the near corner. Up the left wing. Lifts it off the wall. Can't connect with Shook, and it'll be Norwood for AM. Far wall by Mason Burdett. Again, NC State holds the line. Herman leaves it for Arini. Back to Herman in the corner. He'll send it up the wall. And a shot blocked. Glove down at the blue line by Cox. He couldn't hold the line, but he'll turn it right back in. NC State continuing to put the pressure up. Cox cycling behind the net. It's target, but it'll be collected by Leone off the wall. And AM with some pressure now. About two and a half minutes into this first period, both teams have had it. One grade A chance, and both goaltenders able to stop hits a body. NC State will regroup in the neutral zone. Thronson across for Labrizzi, who said to take it, pinching there by Thronson to keep it in. McEnany trying to settle it down in the far corner. Can't control. Now it's Norwood for AM. Yeah, he's able to get it out, but again, can't control. Thronson, his pass deflected. Knocked down nicely by Norwood, but right to ice pack player. That was McEnany with the shot. Locked down by Circus. NC State getting the better chances here in the first five minutes of this one. And again, the four check making it difficult for any of them to break out. Labrizzi banks it off the wall for Nick Shook. He'll take a hit from Norwood and lose the puck. Texas AM back in control. Cycled around the wall. Ricky Frosch holds the blue line. Shot and knocks back up to the point. He'll throw a shot to the net. Norwood gets a piece of it as a defenseman. Knocks it into the corner. Great sustained pressure here from NC State. Govea from the wall. His shot doesn't get through. Again, it's Norwood. We've called his name a lot. This is going to go the length of the ice for icing. And Nick, we finally get a breather here. But NC State, good sequence there. Very good sequence, and that was that. His shot blocked, and now the Aggies turn it back the other way. Kate Willis with some speed, looking across for Spearman. They're unable to connect the dots there. NC State back in control. Nice breakout pass from Marini. Finds Herman with speed. He's got a man breaking in Brenner through his skates, but he'll take it off the wall. A lot of Aggies there to defend. Sent back behind, tracked down by Herman, far corner. His centering pass popped up in the air. Be Cow for his power play. We mentioned Nick special teams could be important in this one. And it's going to be NC State with the first man advantage as Evan McQuaig heads to the penalty box. Yeah, NC State this past weekend up in Springfield, Virginia, did not get a power play goal. Great opportunity early on. Their four check has been very, very well today. We spoke to both coaches before the game. They mentioned that the key is going to be in their style of play. For AM with two quick clears. Really like that opportunity there from State. Three bodies in front that missed the first body. You had two bodies there to back it up. They didn't get the puck in the back of the net like they wanted to, but it sets up a great opportunity. Another clearance there from AM. 45 seconds into the power play. No shots on goal yet for NC State on this man advantage. But as you mentioned, Nick, some good traffic. They need to get those shots all the way through to the net. Cade Cox looking things over. 20 seconds left on the power play shot. Hits Norwood in front again and deflects behind the goal. Kaufman first to it. Looking for some help out in front. He finds Cox who returns it. Back for Cade Cox once more. Backhanded down to Kaufman again. He'll dust it up. Turning with it. You can hear the stick of Toyer indicating the end of the power play. State comes up empty on the man advantage. We're back to five on five, but still pressure for the ice pack. Govea walks in, take the AM breakout. And you can see it on the scoreboard, seven to one, the shot total right now. And of course, you can just see it in the way the game has been played out. NC State has, NC State has spent a lot of time in the offensive end. Uh, there again, high slot, loose puck. McEnany has it. And he accidentally knocks it out of the zone. Jagelski will track it down. 
Tip to Daniel. Has a man in the middle, looking there for Cameron Lohr. That pass disrupted by Morrow and cleared over to the far wall. NC State continues the four check. Sent offensively, but I think the biggest issue right now for AAF, they've got to break it out into the neutral zone at least to maintain possession. This NC State four check is for real right now. They're kind of playing with a bit more energy, if you will. Here's a chance. Off the draw, Robinson can't get a shot away, but he finds Bresingham behind the net. Back at the blue line, Frosch with the one-timer. Robinson was looking for the tip, but couldn't get a stick to it. Held in at the far wall by Cox, who pitch forks it back behind the net. Good pressure, put a body it down. NC State behind the net. Quick one-timer out in front for Herman, and it's going to be swallowed up by the goaltender, Jake Circus. But NC State's got a lot of zone time, Nick. they got to find a way to turn it into goals. They do, and I think that last pass actually was intended for Ricky Frosch up top at the point. He was calling for it, but Herman was right in front, gave a little shot trying to see if he can sneak one by Circus and Net, but right now Circus done a pretty good job in Net. There's been times where he's been put off his line. However, NC State's just not being able to take advantage of State. a and wins the defensive zone, drawn with some speed. Here they go, Mason Burdett with a two-on-one. They score! Uh, it didn't take many opportunities. AM picks the top left corner on Isaac Toyer. And it's 1 0 Aggies. I believe it was Robbie Sowers who finished it off. Now, yeah, Robbie Sowers gets a really good pass from Mason Burdett. We mentioned AM, they've got to get. NC State would be dominating this game, but that's the way hockey goes sometimes. And unfortunately for the Ice Pack, that's the way really this past weekend went. And the start of this game is going the exact same way. Cade McConaughey collects behind his own goal. NC State on the breakout. A little miscommunication on the pass, but Kaufman tracks it down and finds Govea. He'll move forward into the near corner, sends it behind the goal, looking for Nick Shook there. It hops his stick. AM clears it up and out. McConaughey for Kaufman. He's NC State has a chance to. Not sure if it all got all the way to Circus there, but Nick Shook with the chance in tight. Texas A&M back to work on the breakout. Rink wide pass. Marshall rushing, skate to stick. Back to the near side for Spearman, and he'll get tied up bringing it into the offensive zone. They're off sides with 7.02 to go in the first. That last odd man rush for the ice pack. Really good play uh, by Evan McQuaid for Texas A&M, able to break that rush up for NC State, cause them to have to regroup, and then allows A&M to get down the ice with a little breakout of their own. McEnany on the draw for NC State, but it'll be Rushing who wins it for Texas A&M. Aggies chip it deep, first one to it before the ice pack is Herman. Trying to send it up the wall, it'll be clogged up there. McEnany comes away with it, chips it into neutral ice. Some help there from Cameron Lohr, high stick the pressure on. He'll chip and chase. NC State's forward line needed a change. Zach Robinson in on the four check now. He'll tie it up in that far corner. Rushing, pitches it up the wall. Matthew Fillick clears it all the way out. NC State's defense is going to have to chase it down. And the first one there is Daniel Dufresne of Texas A&M, battling with Ricky Frosch. He'll find his defensive pairing in Cox, who returns it now that there's a little more space. Robinson leaves it at the blue line from Emery Oliver. His pass forward deflected away. A lot of discontinuity right now as AM comes in offsides. 526 left in the first. Nick, NC State not quite in the back of the net, and every time they try to get a, a good opportunity, it's either blocked by an AM defender or Circus makes another great save. AM has won three straight draws now as the dump in is deflected out of play. Faceoff stays on top of the NC State blue line. As we mentioned, these two teams will play twice. It's a 7.45 p.m. puck drop tomorrow, right back here. Still plenty of time left in this one, though. NC State trailing 1-0 after a quick strike from Robbie Sowers of Texas A&M on an odd man rush. Aggies in on the four check now in that far corner. Gets tied up there. NC State able to come away with it. That's Labrizi. He'll carry it up the near left wing. Sends it off the wall. Bresingham gets a touch to it. Trying to clear it in. Some help from Robinson. Moves it all the way. Robinson drags to the slot. Oh, he was looking for Oliver. And they weren't quite on the same page. And a good chance goes by the wayside as AM clears it out. Now McConaughey 
up the far wall for Bresingham. He's under pressure from a pair of Texas A&M four checkers. Getting some help there from Thronson. And now NC State can move it out. Pigelski, the pass from McConaughey. So A&M player was upended there. That was Burdett. And I think rightfully so, A&M was looking. A&M in control, clearing pass. Knocked down by Garrett Arini, NC State captain trying to keep it alive. Jagelski gloves it down, and AM able to find the loose puck and clear it out. Herman over to Arini. He's going to step in, fire a shot just over the top. Bounces out in front. Nobody there in a red jersey to put it on goal. And now AM moves it back the other way. It's Burdett. Drops it off. Sowers takes the shot. He scores again. Like for 90% of the game, NC State's had possession of the puck, at least in the neutral zone or offensive zone. And the scoreboard is not reflecting that right now. Yeah, it has been a tough period for Toyer. Obviously, you look at two goals on three shots, it doesn't look good. Those were two really, really good shots. And when there's at least five minutes between shots. Just like that, like we just saw a lot of times tonight, they're getting good rushes, odd man rushes, even if it's even strength. It seems like they have the edge getting down there, the speed. But they just. And it's coming back to the neutral zone. No doubt. It'll be right on top of the AM and M blue line here. This is the newer line that the NC State coaching staff cooked up for this weekend. Gets the loose puck at the AM blue line. Fires a shot off some legs, and they're going to get a stoppage here as Shook got upended and went flying into the AM goal. Once again, another good chance for NC State as Shook's talking to the sideline, it's chirping a little bit, but unable to win it against Cade Willis of AM. Here's Norwood, sent off the wall. Dufresne breaks it out, trying to connect there with Willis, and they can't. NC State turns it right back. McEnany held up at the blue line. Four-man battle there. McEnany tangled up in the stick of Norwood, able to get out of Jake Circus. Another face-off coming. Yeah, NC State's piling on the shots right now. Some of them aren't on target. They have 14 now in the game. But Drew Bressingham made a beautiful pass across. The shot just went a little high. They keep kind of working it around the top. They're not getting shots directly in the slot unless it is on a uh, on an odd man rush. And I think that might be something to look forward to in the second period if NC State adjusts to that. They just really, they, the seven minutes of this game, they were not breaking out to the neutral zone. They adjusted some things. They used their speed to their advantage. It's the reason why they're up 2 nothing. So NC State heads to the first intermission down by two. We're going to step aside here. We'll have first intermission coming up, as well as an interview with Matt Cross of the Raleigh Testicular Cancer Foundation. So we'll be back with NC State Hockey. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Mo's Connection. Purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be... Things NC State. Just off campus in the... Things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue. The Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia. Your favorite NC State team of for men's health. After 20 minutes, it's a 2-0 lead for Texas A&M over your NC State Ice Pack. Chris Lehman, Nick Prozzi back with you at the first intermission here on Pack TV. And Nick, we talked about it, NC State controlled play. You look at the shots, 16-5. It's surprising to see a 2-0 in favor of the Aggies. Yeah, and it's really just those two breakaways the Aggies on two straight facing, but you look at Robbie Sowers who picks up the two goals. It's a very, as I said, opportunistic A&M team in the first period. It is, and I think when you go back to that locker room for A&M, uh, head coach Gary Russell for the Aggies is going to say, look, that was not our best period of hockey, but we came out 2 nothing." And that's the sport sometimes. You get a little bit of puck luck. You get a little bit of just your goalie just being really good. You get your defense as well, carrying as well. And sometimes that leads to good things. Right now it's 2 nothing on the board, and I think right now A&M is going in there like we got the lead, but we can play a lot better. Yeah, it certainly was a good period, I think, at least results-wise for Texas A&M. But if you're NC State, a lot to build off of, it, and really all you're looking for at this point is a puck. And a... We'll continue.
continue to talk about the first period and what ends ANC HD and every minute and need support too the stigma 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 ends here the stigma ends here Nick Prosy back with you at the first intermission. NC State trailing Texas A&M two to nothing after 20 minutes. And Nick, we've talked about, of course, how that period has gone for NC State. Shots wise, went really, really front, like we mentioned before. A&M doing a really good job clogging in front of the net with board yet, but they're generating the chances. They are, and they've caused A&M to have a lot of long shifts as well. So as this game goes on, maybe A&M gets a little bit tired. And that was kind of the Standpoint at first, it seemed like A&M just did not have the energy NC State had. Maybe it was the long ride over all the way to Raleigh from College Station, Texas. It was a long ride, but that goal kind of juvenated them. It jolted them, gave them a lot of energy. And right now, it's kind of even energy rise. Maybe NC State still has a little more. But going into the second period, I think NC State. So when you go into that, you got A&M's two best defenders being out there a lot of time on ice tonight. You keep that new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone, or go online and contact to Moe's Southwest Grill. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 35... ...into opportunities to talk with your kids about alcohol and other drugs. Screen for Success helps you find out if your child needs more support by asking about their health, wellness, and well-being. Keep your kids safe and healthy. Download the free Talk They Hear You mobile app and start using Screen for Success today. Welcome back to the first intermission here on Pack tv NC State trailing Texas A&M. Maybe they went in for a line change. So I think if they just play a little bit crisper as well, that will help things out. Maybe you get a goal not adjusting offensively, but I think they desperately need to adjust offensively and like you mentioned get shots in front we've seen a couple shots in front tonight yep. A&M has made it very clear you can't give them those chances yep. A&M has made it very clear you can't give them those chances but I think A&M as well they were unable to kind of break out of their own zone move to the neutral zone as a team so by going with just the breakaway chances that they're getting getting those odd man rushes I think that's kind of been their game plan a little bit going on right now kind of just relying on the breakaway to get going, get the odd man rush down the ice, and it's worked so far. They've got two goals. They haven't sustained much ice time down in the offensive end, so that might be the game plan for A&M, kind of just pounce off NC State's uh, mistakes and just go with it. Keep going. Going to have a teammate down there, hopefully, so why not keep going, and it's worked so far. Yeah, and I think the other thing to me, and this might sound counterintuitive, mm -hmm. but if you're NC State, you might not mind spending a little bit more time in your defensive zone. Mm -hmm. You could not see at all. Toyer, once he started to mm -hmm. see a few more shots, and then he still only saw five for the period, if you average that out, that's a shot every four yeah. minutes. It's not a lot. But as he started to see more, he was in good position. He made some strong saves. Uh, even the first save he made was in tight. Mm -hmm. He had to get up high, be tall, and make that save. So I think maybe seeing some more shots, if you're Isaac Toyer, would be beneficial. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with you, Chris. Maybe he's getting a little more sample size going on as well. That might help him out coming into this next period, though. When we did see NC State play. Graduate, the Red and White Team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? It's Kick Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, the tailgating essentials, ice pack gear, a proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White they have have a lot of tired bodies they've have a lot of tired bodies having that long trip that they made yesterday coming on over that's going to be a really big factor coming into this game yeah 
so NC State will look to uh, find their way back into this game. And I, I think you, if you listen to that last segment, we're talking about what NC State could do a little bit better uh, in order to get back into this game. might have sounded like we were kind of searching a little bit, and we really kind of were because this team played a really, really strong first period. The only thing that they weren't able to do was finish the puck. They did a really good job of staying in the zone, maintaining pressure. And obviously, you look at the shot, 16-5. to five, It's uh, a very big disparity and very shocking to see the scoreboard uh, being really exactly the opposite. So the two teams set to get things rolling. NC State going to start with that same line that started the game of Govea, Kaufman, and Shook with Thronson and Labrizi on the back end. Isaac Toyer in the goal. On the other side for the Aggies, it'll be Spearman out there along with Smith and Rushing. And then the pairing of Norwood and Morrow. And Circus, of course, in net. Govea and Rushing on the draw. 20 minutes up on the clock. NC State wins the faceoff. Labrizi up the near right side for Shook. He'll lift it. Into the far corner, Kaufman chases after it on the forecheck. Morrow for the Aggies looks to break it up the wall. Pass to the middle, disrupted, but AM able to get it back. Spearman slaps it deep. First one to it for NC State is Labrizi. Pressure there from rushing, and it'll be stolen away. Turnaround shot from Spearman doesn't get to the net. <coughs> Kaufman having some trouble, loses his edge, but he is able to clear the zone. Norwood now in possession for AM. Over to Morrow. He'll lift it in. Near corner. Bouncing puck settled down by Labrizi. Rushing with the pressure will take it away. Centering pass. Skitters in on Isaac Torrier, who holds on for the faceoff. I think that's some of the most offensive zone time that that first line for AM has had tonight. We really haven't mentioned Matthew Rush or excuse me, Marshall Rushing's name since the pregame show. And he's one of their leading point getters for them with five goals, eight assists this year. Um I think A&M right now, a good start to the period. Just keep the pressure. They just got to start shooting the puck, I think. And I think they're waiting for the right shot, though. Zach Herman to take the draw for NC State up against Colson of A&M. Quick shot off the draw. Deflected. Robbie Sowers looking for that hat trick. He's got both goals for A&M so far. <laughs> NC State on the breakout. That'll be stopped up at the A&M blue line. Cleared back out. NC State in possession again. Frosch. Up to the red line, far side, he's got Herman. His pass into the zone off the skate of a linesman. NC State able to hold the blue line, though. Cross ice pass taken off the wall by Arini. Centers it through the blue paint. Nobody there in a red jersey, though. And AM clears once again. Swatted white back in by Cade Cox. And NC State offsides, a delayed offside. And I don't know if Brenner didn't hear it or... But it was there, but NC State going to have to come all the way back down on this delayed offsides. And a faceoff comes into their zone. They're not a good start for the ice pack this year. They seem a little bit napping right now, especially offensively. Garrett Arini kind of was wide open on his side of the ice, that last offensive possession, and no one could just find him until it was too late. NC State off the breakout has a three-on-one. Arini into the middle. He's got Herman. Takes the shot. Save made by Circus and a sprawling stop on the rebound. Well, this is it, feeling a little bit like the Kentucky game. It is. Circus is starting to take over this game. We've given him credit. I don't think we've given him enough, enough credit. And, again, the woes for NC State offensively continue Almost two on zero chance right in front of the net, and they can't capitalize on a circus with two really great saves. And he's starting to take over this game. It's the reason why he's seventeen to seventeen right now on saves, no goals on the board for the pack. NC State controls off the draw. Brenner throws it caddy corner, taken off the wall by Arini. Back behind for Brenner. He'll turn with it behind the net. Spins it out in front. Nobody there to receive it. Loose in the high slot. Garrett Arini will take control for NC State. Turns with it and finds some space. He'll walk into the far circle. Banks it off the wall for Frosch, who kicks it down low. Nobody there in a red jersey. And AM clears it out under the skate of Nicholas Leone. And Cade Cox looking to break out from behind his own net. He'll carry it up the far wall. Sends it to the red line. Swatted back by Norwood. It hits a body, and now NC State moves forward again. Herman, backhand pass. One-timer for Marini. And it, not sure if it got to Circus or not, but the Aggies able to keep it out again. 
Norwood steps up on the breakout pass. He'll run in with it for the Aggies. Takes the shot. Glove save made by Toyer. He'll hold on for the faceoff. Well, again, a and they're I think they're doing a much better job defensively getting to NC State. They're not letting them dominate the offense's zone time. A couple adjustments were made at halftime, and A&M's able to break the puck out as well. They're playing a lot better than they did that first period, which could be a really big sign of concern for the ice pack in a two-hole deficit. NC State wins another defensive zone draw. McConaughey able to clear. Loose puck in the slot, and it's Robinson collecting for the ice pack. Looking for the breakout pass through the middle. That hits a skate. Now the centering pass. All the way back to the blue line. Shot from Morrow. Deflected through traffic. Didn't get to the goal. Rushing. Back up to Morrow at the blue line. A&M with pressure. Miscommunication, though. It's off a skate. Now Bressingham has a chance. One-on-one -on -one against Norwood. He'll body up against the NC State forward. Who button hooks, looks cross ice, finds McConaughey off the wall. His shot blocked, decides to swat it deep. Now it's Oliver looking out into the middle. And that misses everybody and goes the length of the ice. A free change here for AM. Toyer looking to stretch out the pass intended for Robinson. Unable to connect in its icing. NC State back to their defensive zone. That's a really bad sequence of plays there for NC State. The bad pass that goes all the way down and then you try to get them get A them off guard excuse me off guard with the line change with the stretch pass that turns into an icing and that miscommunication for NC State is still going on here in this second period and sooner or later it's gonna keep adding up. Off the draw shot hits the crossbar. Good chance there for Daniel Dufresne. And he just about made it three nothing. I don't know how Daniel Dufresne got that shot away. There was a lot of traffic in front of him. And one second, you kind of don't see the puck because of the amount of bodies in front. The next one, it's off the crossbar and in the netting. Really good opportunity from Dufresne right off the faceoff as well. That'll be McEnany to take the draw against Cade Willis of Texas A&M. And it's won by the Aggie. Swatted down below the goal line. NC State first to the loose puck there. McEnany up the wall. Daniel finds Cameron Lohr on the breakout pass. He'll be stopped up near the red line on the far wall. Pokes loose to Daniel, who sweeps it into the zone. NC State will try and get in on the forecheck here. A&M quickly clears it out. Labrizzi knocks it down. Ice pack will reset by their own blue line. Now it's Daniel looking back to the far side. His pass hits a skate and deflects back into the ice pack zone. Daniel again, pirouettes with it, finds Labrizzi all the way across. Too long, not sure if it was intended for McEnany or Thronson, but it creates a chance here for Texas A&M. Quick one-time shot, fanning on it there, Dufresne. Now NC State takes control and moves out. Scott Daniel down that far wing, steps around one man, takes the shot, juicy rebound. Nick Shook can't get to it in time, and Texas A&M dodges a bullet there. NC State will regroup as the puck cleared all the way down into their end. Ricky Frost turns with it at the goal line. He was looking for Thronson there. It goes the length of the ice, but Nick Shook is there to negate the icing call. Uh, there's a whistle. I'm not sure. Might have hit the netting over on that near side on the clearance, so a stoppage of play. It also could have hit a player on the NC State bench and stayed in play. So faceoff comes out on top of the AM blue line. Top line back on the ice for NC State as Govea will line up for the faceoff against uh, Colson. And a whistle as the puck's dropped. Looks like the linesman just officials weren't quite in position for that one. A&M will win the draw. They are forced to retreat back behind their own goal. Good forecheck from Kaufman. Held in at the far blue line by Frosch. Now Govea. Weaving, or pardon me, Shook weaving through traffic. He'll carry it behind the net before he loses his footing. And now Morrow in control for Texas A&M. His clearance poked off a stick. Ice pack hold the zone. Cox turns it back to the high slot. Sent into the middle. Nick Shook not there. Just couldn't quite connect. And A&M clears it all the way down once again. A friendly hop there for NC State. And it will skip all the way down for icing. And so a chance we talked about 
long shifts for A&M mm -hmm. potentially being a problem this period, Nick, and they've got to keep tired bodies out there after the icing call. Yeah, and Robbie Soares just skated all the way down the ice trying to beat that icing and a violent collision against the glass that he took at the end of that play. He's got to skate all the way down. No, that one's going to hurt tomorrow morning. But again, the, the NC State's got to use this to their advantage. We're seeing a lot of opportunities where the passes, they're just missing who they're intended to. Oh, a diving play made there by Burdett. It'll disrupt Brenner's shot as NC State had won the draw. And then forces it deep. Cox retreats for it for the ice pack. He'll elevate a pass out into neutral ice. Knocked down by the body of Norwood, who has trouble advancing it further. A little bit of help there from Ethan Chen, but NC State maintains control for the moment. Centering pass at the NM blue line stolen away. Leone turns with it. Now he's got speed. Crosses the NC State blue line. He'll circle behind the net with it. Looking over his options. Lots of speed here for Leone. Decides to take the shot from the high slot. He hits Brenner with it. Second try from an off angle. Whistles wide. A&M holds the zone, though. Down into the near corner. Turning with it. Uh, it'll be taken away now by Herman. Looking up for Brenner. That pass knocked right back in. A&M continuing with the pressure. Leone out in front. Intended for Chen. Knocked back behind the net. But the Aggies maintain control. Good pressure here from Herman, but he's unable to take the puck away. Now McQuaig, his shot deflected away. McQuaig will hold the zone again, turning with it. Leone fires the shot off the stick of Frosch and wide. Now NC State can finally move it out. Herman has some speed. He'll cross with Arini at the blue line. Beautiful move by Herman to drag it in. Unable to get a shot away. Sends it to the middle. Intercepted. And then back the other direction. Big hit there by Brenner, and NC State knocks it loose. Here's Emery Oliver. I don't think A&M was ready for that. They wanted to make a change. Oliver trying to step through traffic. Had it knocked off his stick, but he gets it back. Turning with it, looking for Robinson. It hops past him. Bre Bresingham with the shot. Hit a body on the way through. NC State looking for some sustained pressure along the near side. Stalled out at the blue line, but A&M... Going to regroup and break it out. Marshall rushing, trying to chip it in. That's blocked just inside the blue line by Jagelski. He's unable to clear it, though. Quick shot in on goal. Spearman shot directed away by Toyer, and NC State moves it up the near side. Jagelski fires away, shoulder down by Circus. He hasn't faced nearly as much this period, but a big save there. It stays 2-0. Shots you can see just at the top of your screen there, 20-7 to in favor of NC State. It is 4-2 this period in favor of the Ice Pack. They'll battle for it. You see it up close as Bresingham unable to come away with it. Knocked down by Spearman. It's caught in his skates. NC State will poke it loose and turn back the other way. Bresingham going to go one on three. Lost the puck, though. NC State trying to hold the zone as McEnany flips it in. And M's breakout pass. Stolen away by NC State. Cameron Lohr now at the red line for the pack. McEnany looking to the middle. Unable to connect with Daniel. Charging in. Thronson will hold the zone. Back up for Lore at the blue line. He'll fire away. That just missed the far post. NC State getting some good chances here. Still trying to find the back of the net. And they're going to get a good opportunity here as the breakout pass goes the length of the ice. Another icing call on AM. And again, a chance here to get fresh bodies out. Nick, it'll be the top line here for NC State with a golden opportunity against a tired Aggie squad. Yeah, another long shift for the Aggies going on to the defensive zone faceoff now for them. They've got to win one of these there. As I mentioned, there you go. They win one of them, but they were losing a lot, and then that's the other problem. They can't clear it out. NC State able to hold the zone, looking for Kaufman. Was Shook, and they were unable to connect. They'll have to regroup as the puck hops out of the zone. Pass intended for Nick Shook up the near wall. Bounces over his stick again, and looks like we've got a whistle, and NC State's going to have an offensive zone draw here. I think it might have hit that NC State bench again. But it'll be Govea on the near side faceoff dot to take the draw for NC State. 11-12 left in the second period. Not quite as dominant of a second for NC State, but they are still out shooting A&M 4-2 on the period. Another clearance must have hit an NC State player as icing is waved off. Labrisi collects behind his own cage. Backhands it off the glass and out. 
Trickling puck will be controlled now by Norwood of Texas A&M. He's able to find Dufresne, who lifts it deep. NC State first to it, wrapped around the wall to the near side for Shook. He'll swat it off the boards, can't get it out, though, and A&M sends it right back. Thronson will try this time. He'll elevate it all the way down. This one's going to make it the distance for icing. So things starting to break up here a little bit for NC State. But that's the difficult part about the second period is feathering those clearances at the right speed to avoid icing and give your line mates enough time to get off the ice. Yeah, and when you get the other team to do an icing like the ice pack just did, <coughs> excuse me, it allows you to get a really good offensive zone chance. And if A&M wins the faceoff, which they do. Quick so, shot yeah. just over top. But NC State still stuck in their own zone at the moment. Well, this has been the most productive line tonight for A&M. Robbie Sowers has both goals as the puck squirts out in front. Toyer, Johnny on the spot, will hop on it and cover up for a faceoff and get some fresh lines out there for NC State. Yeah, very much needed. NC State, they get those fresh bodies out there. And you mentioned that this line has both goals. They were both, though, on those breakaway opportunities. Curious to see, which they've done really well, setting up the offense with an offensive zone faceoff, if they can find another successful play. It'll be lifted up and out. Soft one is going to trickle all the way in on goal, just getting there as A.J. Cosman to sweep it away from his goaltender. NC State almost had a chance in front. Cleared out by the Aggies. Glove down by Cade Cox. NC State will send it right back in. They're unable to possess as they get into the zone, though, and now a stretch pass finds Sowers. He'll break into the zone. Stripped from behind by Arini. He'll send it behind the NC State net, and that's where the ice pack will restart. Frosch sends it up the wall for Brenner. Knocked off his stick. Aggies back in possession. Lifted up through the middle. A pinching Cade Cox takes it away. He'll float one over to the near side. Zach Herman with the pressure up against Evan McQuaig. NC State still struggling to hold the zone. Now we've got an odd man rush for the Aggies and a little bit of a strong touch there from McQuaig. Puck skitters all the way down behind the net and the ice pack will regain control. That was a chance that goes by the wayside for A&M and that looked like a lot a lot like the two chances that ended up in the back of the net in the first. Yeah, massive break for the ice pack. Able to get that pass just a little too far. It was three on one that time. An extra body for AM unlike the other two. But the ice pack get their opportunity back. They're gonna get set up with an offensive zone face off with the icing here. So NC State off the face off. You got the fresh bodies, you just had the line change. Can you find success keeping the puck in the offensive zone? Because this period, AM's done a much better job of keeping it out. So it'll be Emery Oliver to take the draw for NC State on the near side. Lined up against Zach Colson. Oliver wins the draw. McConaughey goes D to D with Cowan. He'll step in, takes the shot, and it's immediately swallowed up by the goaltender, Circus. Another face-off coming and get some fresh legs out there for A&M. And then this will kind of neutralize and offset the advantage NC State had, like we keep mentioning with the fresh bodies out there. Problem is, can NC State keep the puck in the offensive zone once again? Well, they'll win the faceoff, but they're unable to hold the zone after they do so. The puck's been hopping around a little mm -hmm. bit tonight, and it hopped on Cowan there, who sends it all the way down for icing. And now the ice pack will have to defend. Now, NC State shouldn't really have too tired of legs mm -hmm. out there. They haven't been out for too long, but they will have <coughs> to defend in their own end here. You are right, but I think a bigger issue is you just had an offensive zone faceoff with the icing of A&M. You win the faceoff, it goes too far down, and now you're doing it again. As that one hits the roof, wow, that hit one of the beams up top. Uh, interesting to see where this faceoff will come. It should be back in the defensive zone for NC State, which, again, that's a problem, though. You make a bad play, it can kind of hang on you and sting you, kind of just hang around the thought of it. They're actually going to move this to center ice, and I think that's kind of getting NC State's heads now. Uh, the indication is that it was deflected, so... That's why the draw comes out of the NC State zone. Oliver to take the face off. Gets tied up along that dot, and as it squirts loose, NC State comes away with it. 
McConaughey up the near side. Bresingham tied up there, and it'll be taken by Ethan Chen. He'll look to the middle. Leone back to Chen, disrupted by McConaughey, who sends it up the near wall, but too many A&M bodies there. Now Bresingham with a chance to break it out. He's got Robinson with him in the middle. Moved across for Cowan. He'll take the shot, directed into the far corner by Circus, where Bresingham picks it up for NC State. Leaves it for Cowan. Back to Bresingham in the middle. Can't corral it. Texas A&M will move out, but they're going to be called for their second penalty of the evening. And NC State with a crucial power play coming up here. It will be a hooking call on Texas A&M. A yeah, penalty called on Matthew Perry for Texas A&M. Second power play for the Ice Pack tonight. The first one didn't go their way. Really good kill by the Aggies. This time for the Ice Pack, a long change. Like we keep mentioning, eight minutes left in the second. You've got to use this as momentum. You've got to get the puck in the back of the net. Rutcher going back down the last six minutes of this period, down 2-0 again. A&M wins the faceoff. Norwood with a slapper clears the zone. NC State turns it right back. Bodied up along the near wall. Govea, but NC State holds the zone. Cox will walk it in. Switches places with Nick Shook. Cox looks all the way across. Bouncing puck, hops the stick of Thronson. NC State will regroup the power play. Cox on the near wall. Turning with it, looking for space. He finds Thronson on the far side with plenty of it. He'll walk it in. Dropped back for Cox at the blue line. Moved across for Shook. He'll square one up. Oh, he just missed the top right corner. NC State with a good chance there on the shot from Nick Shook, who steps into the corner. You get a look at it up close. Shook behind the net. Back up top, they'll work it around the horn. Cox moved along now for Govea. He'll hand it off to Shook about halfway through this power play now. Cox again. Throws it through traffic too high. It catches the glass behind. Govea tracks down the rebound for NC State. He'll leave it for Thronson, who protects the puck nicely. Walks in and fires one wide. But again, NC State keeps the pressure. Cox back across for Shook. He'll take another shot. That's blocked in front. NC State still with it. Cox tracks it down. He'll walk it in. Looking for some help out in front. It's not there. Circles with it and sends it back behind. Now Kaufman in control, down to 35 seconds left on the man advantage. He'll leave it for Govea to take behind the net. Leaves it for Shook. Down on the hashes, cross-ice pass, taken off the wall by Thronson with 24 seconds left on the power play. Thronson again. Looking it over. Throws it to the net. Loose in front. Kaufman couldn't direct it on goal, but NC State still in possession. This has been a long, long sustained zone time for NC State. Kaufman pinned to the wall. Down to five seconds left on the power play. Looks like A&M will be able to kill it off, but how long will NC State hold the zone? Another shot blocked in front. And now A&M springing Sowers. It's through his skates, so he don't have a breakaway, and his one-time shot from the goal line hits the side of the net. Cox with a stretch pass. Knocked down nicely by Herman. He's got no help, though, and A&M pickpockets him and clears it back up the ice. Sowers. Leaves it at the blue line where Colson can collect. Back to the middle for Sowers, and a good defensive effort made there by Thronson, who's been out there a while. But NC State back the other way. Shook trying to drag through. Can't do so. A&M sends it back up to the blue line. McConaughey holds the line. He'll send it down into the corner. NC State continuing to build off of this power play as a shot is held on to by the glove of Circus. But Nick, great, great sequence there from NC State. Just still unable to find the back of the net. When you hold the puck in the offensive zone the entirety of the two minutes of the power play and you don't score, it's going to be frustrating. And I think it kind of sums up the game so far at this point. NC State dominating offensive zone time, and then they're just not able to come away with a goal on the board. And I think that time they took a lot of shots. They were firing a lot more, but the bodies in front took away the lanes. We saw a lot of shots miss wide. Another shot into the glove of the goaltender Circus. NC State, they've been looking for that quick shot off the offensive zone drop. Brenner again set up directly behind the centerman Herman. One to Brenner, quick shot coming from the blue line. That one off the stick of Jagelski and couldn't find the net with it. Jagelski again at the red line. Tangled up there with Brenner. It ends up in the NC State zone and the a and Aggies will work on the attack. Pass to the middle. Disrupted, held in at the blue line, thrown towards the goal by rushing. 
Uh, NC State able to get back control at the blue line. It's Brenner. Slides it out for Herman. Centered for Arini. He's got some speed moving in. Fires away and a blocker save made by Circus. NC State still searching for that first one. Here comes the shot. Hits a skate in front as Jagelski tried to put it on goal. A&M again escapes their own zone, gaining the red line. It's Ethan Chen sending it deep. And the Aggies able to get off for a change. NC State trying to take advantage of it. Arini unable to find that pass from Jagelski. But now McConaughey trying to force his way forward around Morrow who pickpockets him, but NC State has the pressure there. It's Arini. He has it taken away now. A&M moving forward. Christian Spearman had it caught in his skate. Some help there from Morrow, and they'll get tangled up along that far wall right along the red line. Scott Daniel in there along with McConaughey for NC State. Drop back for Frosch. His pass intended for Brenner there was disrupted and deflected back behind the A&M goal. Down under four minutes left in the second period. Neither team has put one in the back of the net. But maybe a chance here for the A&M. Walking in, and it's knocked away from rushing. He put a hand up looking for a penalty, and I think he's going to get it here. Or no, pardon me, the net comes off. It's moorings, but Marshall rushing there. You know, as soon as he lost that putt coming in, had his hands up looking back for a call, and he's not going to get it. Don't know what call he's looking for. I think it might have been a tripping call, I believe, but he didn't get it. A little bit frustrating right now, and I think for the ice pack, again, the breakaways are killing them. And the reason why they're down 2-0, again, there are two more this period. They got lucky with the pass two, but it's costing them right now. Cameron Lohr knocks down a high pass, walks into the high slot, and has his shot tipped over the net. But NC State looking to get back to work in the offensive zone. Quick shot there from Daniel. Unable to find the frame with it. And I'm trying to clear. Stolen in the high slot. Daniels fans on the shot. And now the Aggies move it forward. It's Sowers, who's responsible for both goals in this game. Putting some pressure on Cox behind the net. Knocks the puck loose, but NC State picks it up. Ricky Frosch breaks it out for Daniel. He'll gain the blue line, take a shot. Blocked in front there by A.J. Cosman. NC State... Putting pressure on down below the goal line. Held in at that far wall by Frosch. NC State, they're doing a good job holding the zone. They have not been able to hold on to the puck, though. McEnany in there to help. Puck deflects back to Frosch. He'll move it along for Cox. Under some pressure there. Backhand pass. Well, he's looking for a man headed off the ice. As NC State needs a change here, they're going to turn it over and make those changes. Clearing pass, stolen away by Robinson, fresh off the bench. He's going to be bodied off the puck as he gains the blue line. NC State recollects. Labrizzi sends it across for Cox. His pass in the skate of Emery Oliver, who's bodied up. And it looks like a penalty coming up on that. It's going to be a kneeing penalty at NC State with their third power play of the game and their second of the period. And it'll last... About the rest of, of this frame here, it'll be number 23, A.J. Cosman, the defenseman headed to the box. Another great opportunity for the Ice Pack, their last power play. All two minutes was in the offensive zone. Coming on to this one now, I think coming to the end of the period, maybe fatigue may play a factor, but I think for the Ice Pack, again, like you mentioned it in the intermission report, you got to get it into the slot and take your shots there, and I think with four on the ice, this is the perfect time to do it. Herman wins the faceoff for NC State. They'll start the power play in the offensive end. Robinson now near blue line. Looking to the middle, one-time shot from Arini is deflected up into the netting behind the goal, and we'll get another faceoff on the far side of the A&M net. And that's a really good idea for NC State to do. Try to get Arini, your captain, set up in the slot right down low. Really good defensive play by A&M, but if you keep trying that, you're going to get better opportunities. NC State again controls the offensive zone draw. Robinson walking it down the near wall. Sent to the middle, deflected up and over, but it'll be tracked down by Herman. He sends it behind the net. Turning with it there, Oliver. Looking for some help, finds it up top in Labrizzi. Over to the top of the far circle. Back across, and it bounces over the stick of Robinson and into the near corner. And then they may unable to alleviate the pressure, though. 125 left on the man advantage, 139 left in the period. AM denies the centering pass again. They fail to clear. Pass in the middle intended for Arini. This time it'll be sent the length of the ice. Toyer comes out to play it. But NC State thought they might try and press the issue there, and 
avoid any changes from A&M, but they only got one. So still some tired bodies out there for A&M as Robinson knocked off the puck. Oliver in to help, forces it deep. A&M tries to clear, glove down by Labrizzi. He'll drop it down to the goal line. Centering pass deflected in, and it'll be gloved down by the goaltender Circus. And just 55 seconds left on the power play. Well, 28 of 28 in the save department tonight for Circus. Now he is just on his head tonight. And I think, you know, final minute nine of this period, 55 seconds on the power play, a and might lean on him a little bit, try to get him home into the second period, still up two, and that will help as well. a and with their first win on the penalty kill on the faceoff. They'll clear it the length of the ice. One minute left in the period, and a 15-second difference between the power play and the period clock. NC State sets it up at the blue line. Cox, 30 seconds left on the man advantage. Moved over, shot coming, body down there by Circus. Worked back up top for Nick Shook. Throws it through traffic, hit a skate, and NC State unable to direct it on goal. Now it's Cox. Moved across, still a breezy. He'll drop it off for Shook. Now over to Cade Cox again. He'll look things over. Down to 23 seconds left in the period. Five seconds left on the power play, and that clearance should finish off the man advantage. NC State 0 for 3 on the power play tonight. And m clears it again. This one will go all the way down, and Cade Cox wins the race. It'll be an offensive zone draw with just 10 seconds left. Well, just like this past weekend, the power play woes continue for NC State there. Now 0 for their last 14 on the power play going back to the past weekend. It's just not working well for the ice pack right now. Offensively, the offensive woes continuing despite the shots that they're putting up. One last chance here for NC State. 10 seconds to go in the period. They love a goal going into the intermission. Herman on the draw. It'll be tangled up there in the near circle. A&M's Norwood comes away with it. He'll direct it behind the net. A&M will play keep away, and they're going to maintain a 2-0 lead through the second period. NC State again continuing to put shots on goal. They had 13 that period to 2 for Texas A&M, but again, unable to find the back of the net. Yeah, um the shot selection, I think this period was improved. The power play shot selection on the second one I don't think was the greatest. However, they're getting more chances, I think. And they're kind of just getting out goalied right now, I believe. I think Circus is just on his head. He's playing a very good game. He's faced 29 shots. He saved all 29. Sometimes you put the puck on net, you think good things will happen. But when you got a rock in there, like Jason was tonight. So NC State still down by two. They're going to have some work in the third period. We'll be back with the second intermission. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually like uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? It's Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to be. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in, roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill.
from the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With- WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C State. high quality ingredients we got that go ahead do your thing come on let's get weird we don't judge Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites dine in pick up or order on the Mo rewards app either way don't just stroll in roll all in to Moe's southwest grill i'm with 2018 lacrosse national champion christian gaudy for the fda's don't get burned sunscreen challenge bring it daryl She's tough, but I won't get burned today. I'm using a broad spectrum sunscreen. The FDA recommends broad spectrum sunscreens with an SPF of 15 or higher with other sun protection measures to reduce the risk of sunburn and skin cancer. You smoke me, Kristen. 40 minutes in here at Invisalign Arena. NC State still trailing Texas A&M 2-0. Chris Lehman, Nick Perazzi back with you here at the second intermission. And Nick, it seemed like a whole lot of the same for NC State mm-hmm. in that second period. I think we did see A&M with a little bit more push, a little bit more zone time. But NC State, I think, again, playing a good period, playing pretty well, just not finding a way to put it in the back of the net. Yeah, I mean, pretty much the period looked the exact same as the first period other than the increased offensive zone time that A&M had and the zero goals a and had because they did have two breakaway chances that easily could have found the back of the net and made it three or even four nothing. And for the ice pack, on the other hand, going into that period, I think the power play was the big issue. Like I mentioned before, over 14 on the power play since this past weekend. Things have got to change for NC State. Yeah, that certainly hurts. You have two. And the thing is about those two power plays is you can generate momentum without mm-hmm. scoring on the power play. Not that NC State did a pretty good job mm-hmm. of that, particularly on the first one. A puck got cleared early, but once they got established in the zone, they didn't let AM out. After it went back to five on five, the puck escaped the zone briefly, but they got right back mm-hmm. to it. It really didn't look a whole lot different at five on five than it did on the power play. So they've been able to get the chances. It's just not the chances in the mm-hmm. right spot. No, and I think we mentioned before, trying to get in the slot. We saw them try to get Garrett Arini set up in the slot right down low. Great defensive play by AM, but then they didn't really go back to it. They kind of went back to kind of shooting up top near the point, not in the slot exactly. And I think going into this third period, NC State's got to focus on just getting the puck in front of the net, getting bodies in front of the net as well, because they are not getting many rebounds up close. Uh, we've done a lot of talking about hockey here tonight. At our next break, we are going to talk a little bit about something different as our we will have our guest finally Matt Cross joining us from the Raleigh Testicular Cancer Foundation. So we'll step aside and be right back on Pack TV. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. 
it's time to talk about men's mental health. 80% of suicides are done by men. Men are three times less likely to ask for help if they are struggling. One man every minute commits suicide. Men are more likely to suffer from substance abuse disorders. Alcohol kills six times more men than women. Men are three times less likely to ask for help if they are struggling. We've never needed each other more than we do right now. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to talk about how you feel. Being silent doesn't mean you're being strong. This is a movement for men's health. The silence needs to be broken. Men need support too. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma ends here. The stigma ends here. Welcome back to Invisalign Arena. Nick Parazzi here with a special guest tonight. I am here with Raleigh Testicular Cancer Foundation founder Matt Cross here. And Matt, I just want to talk about the importance of tonight's game and kind of the relationship you have with the Ice Pack. Yeah, so um, I am a local youth hockey coach. Uh, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer around three years ago. And I was blessed with uh, receiving a lot of support from the local community. Um, in an effort to give back to that same community that supported me, uh, we started the Raleigh Testicular Cancer Foundation, and we've been a local nonprofit now for about three years. Uh, we have raised over four hundred thousand dollars, which is uh, exceptional. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to raise awareness about testicular cancer, but also men's health in general. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stigmas associated with men's health. Um, and so part of tonight's events uh, is a Movember themed charity game. Uh, five local organizations have partnered together, uh, usually rivals on the ice, but coming together off the ice uh, for a singular cause. And so tonight's theme is just raising awareness, raising funds um, so that we can help support cancer patients uh, in our great city. Yeah, and um, like you mentioned, you were you were diagnosed with testicular cancer. Um, how was your fight with that, and what would you give advice to those out there that are kind of dealing with not only just testicular cancer, but other types of cancers or other issues with their health? Yeah, so I had a bump um, that was there a number of months, and I did what most men do, and that was, you know, if I forget about it, uh, you know, if I have another reason to go to the doctor, uh, maybe I'll ask him while I'm there. Um, and so I went through some surgeries, I went through chemo, um, and uh, thankfully I've been cancer free now for a few years. But testicular cancer is actually, it's the number one uh, most common cancer, 15 to 35. Uh, a lot of men don't know that. And so uh, performing self checks uh, is really important. We have a check your acorns campaign. Our logo is, uh, we, we've, tried to be funny and clever with the, the city of Oaks here in Raleigh with the, the acorns. Um, and so self-checks um, and really just empowering men to become more comfortable with their health. Um, and, you know, if you have something going on, go get it checked out. Um, men are always taught to be strong and powerful and to toughen up. Um, and I think, um, you know, it's important that men realize that every once in a while they, they need support from other areas. And finally, I have a lot of respect for your organization and yourself. Really proud and grateful that you're able to come out here tonight. Any uh, recommendations to kind of help the cause here to the viewing, to the viewers? Yeah. So, um, if you'd like to learn more about our mission, you can visit our website at checkeracorns.org. Um, you can donate there. Uh, as I said, we've we've raised a lot of money in the last number of years, but um, we get connected with patients who have been diagnosed, mm -hmm. um, and we support those patients by showing up to treatment. Uh, going to doctor's appointments with them, but also helping with financial grants. So we've been able to provide $75,000 directly to men that are going through cancer. So uh, money is important. Uh, so if you want to donate to our cause, that's checkyouracorns.org. All right. Thank you, Matt Cross. Truly an honor to have you here tonight. Like you mentioned, checkyouracorns.org if you want to help donate and help the cause. When we come back, we'll have our thoughts and predictions for the third period. Life is for learning, and that doesn't stop with graduation. A great university goes far beyond campus. It allows you to see the big picture. A great university gives you tools. Community. Partnership. A launch pad. You don't just go to NC State University. You take us with you. NC State. Think and do.
Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually like uh, in my studio. With- WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C. Welcome back to the second intermission here on Pack TV. NC State trailing Texas A&M two to nothing. Chris Lehman back with Nick Parazzi. And Nick just finished talking with Matt Cross of the Raleigh Testicular Cancer Foundation. And of course, a little bit more perspective. Mm-hmm. And of course, we all love to watch the game of hockey, but there's always more to it than that. Yeah, you never know what's going on with one of your friends, your family members, until you truly ask them and show your support for them. And I really think Matt Cross's foundation and the message he's spreading across really the Raleigh area and hopefully soon the nation is really something empowering, and I hope everybody is touched and motivated by that. And hopefully NC State can make it a little bit more of a celebratory mm-hmm. night for November night here as we head into the third period. We've talked about it a lot. It's kind of like beating a dead horse at this point, but if you're NC State, you're getting the shots, you're getting the pressure, you're just not getting the goals. No, and I think going into this period, I think they have 29 shots on the board. They put up a lot of shots, especially against a team and a goaltender that faced 45 his last game last week all the way back in Texas, but they're not going in the back of the net right now. So going into this period, I think you need, Ice Pack need to focus on more high percentage shots and try to get some better opportunities. Yeah, I think the big thing is we talked about getting bodies mm-hmm. in front. I actually think if you're NC State at this point, you need to try and stretch things yep. out. Uh, and you look at the offensive zone time, they spend a lot of time in the zone. At times, the puck's moving around really well. They're forcing A&M to defend. A lot of times, though, they're sticking to the perimeter. They're not cycling quite as quickly as maybe they could. I think if you can move the puck a little faster, you're going to open up some of that space in the offensive zone and find some more chances. The other thing... You look at the, the numbers going into this mm-hmm. period, NC State 0 for 3 on the power play. You've got to think at some point a and is probably going to get a power play you're going to have to kill off. But special teams-wise, if you're NC State and you get another man advantage, it has to end up in the back of the net. Yeah, it does. And with these new lines, I don't know if it's a little bit of chemistry going on. Gary Dorini has not really been a big factor in this game like he normally is, so that might be playing into effect with it. But no penalties tonight for NC State. It was something very uncharacteristic of this team that can either take a lot of penalties or they'll take one or two throughout the game none through the first two is really good to see the problem is they're not capitalizing when um, Texas A&M takes those penalties so going into this third I think NC State can play a little more aggressive try not to get on the penalty kill though which they've been so great at because one penalty kill you're down 3-0 that might be the end of your night absolutely and you're talking with Texas A&M's coaching staff before the game they're very confident with that first power play unit so you don't want to give them a chance to score so NC State 20 minutes left to make it happen down by two don't really have to change too much just got to find the back of the net we'll be back with the third period from the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually like uh, in my studio. With- WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C. Steve. 
Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Uh, we're just about set to start the third and final period here at Invisalign Arena. NC State trailing Texas A&M 2 to nothing. Chris Lehman and Nick Pronzi back with you as we start period number three. But for NC State, the only thing really that needs to change is the score total. <laughs> they haven't been able to find the back of the net. A lot of it, I think, has to do with the way that Texas A&M has clogged up the middle. They haven't allowed a lot of clean looks for NC State. And then the clean looks they have gotten have either just been lower percentage shots or you've got Jake Circus back there who has made some big saves. None of them, you know, ten bellers are really, really stellar saves, but some solid goaltending for the Aggies tonight. Kind of have to have that when you've given up 30 goals. But off the draw to start the third, it's A&M in control. They'll sweep it across to the far wall and get things set up. Stretch pass stolen away. It was off the mark. Labrizi, D to D with Thronson, looking into the middle for Nick Shook. It missed his stick, but he's going to beat out the icing call. Good hustle from Nick Shook, who forces it over to the far corner. Govea back to the blue line, Labrizi. He'll give it right back to Govea. Centering pass there. Shook slid it in on goal, and it'll be swallowed up by the goaltender, Circus. NC State almost got a little bit lucky there. Circus lifted the pads a little bit, but he was able to drop back and make the save. Yeah, and Shook was facing the wrong way, and he had the puck on the wrong side of the stick receiving that pass. Otherwise, it's a quick turnaround. The net's wide open for him to make it 2-1. to one. Big break for A&M, but if you're NC State, they got the puck right in front of the net with the body in front, which is something we said they have to do if they want to come back in this game. Govea on the draw again against rushing. He'll kick it back to Kaufman. Quick shot. Didn't get all the way to the net. NC State will keep the pressure on. Kicked up the near wall and out. Spearman chasing it down for Texas A&M. He'll battle there with Jagelski, and it gets stopped up in front of the NC State bench. Ice pack. Send it back into neutral ice. Thronson doing a great job forcing it into the offensive zone, but it'll be poked back out. NC State regroups. Shook. On the top of the far circle, wrists one wide. It hit something on the way in, so the faceoff stays in the offensive zone. Really good start for NC State. Once again, they're keeping the puck in the offensive zone. They had that good chance on that first shot by Nick Shook. Other than that, though, it's kind of been the same old slog as the game has been, where it's just NC State not letting A&M get past their own blue line, but not able to put the puck in the back of the net. On A&M, Zach Colson wins the defensive zone draw. Aggies unable to clear. Herman looking to the middle. Brenner deflects it back to Frosch. Slap pass down low for Arini. Looking all the way across. Beautiful look to find Cox. His one-timer hit a body on the way in. That was Evan McQuaig, who's shaken up, sent, heading back to the bench. And now A&M will have to come all the way back down on an icing call. And it'll be interesting to see. McQuaig is on the bench. He was a little bit shaken up. Are they going to make him go back out? Doesn't look like they will. And some of it has to do with the timing. He may have been off the ice in time, and he is actually going to leave the bench. So we'll keep an eye on that to see if number 11 returns for the Aggies. But another offensive zone draw here for State. Herman gets tangled up there 
with Colson. A&M comes away with it. They've got numbers if they hurry. Over to the far side, pass intended for Sowers. It'll be stolen away by NC State at the defense. They'll work it around the wall, but not out. Thrown right back in, but not on goal. NC State looking for the quick breakout. Stretch pass on and off the stick of Arini. Bounces out in front, and he can't get a shot away. Now it looks like Circus will pounce on it, but another good chance in now, there's a term puck luck in hockey, and NC State has had none of it tonight. No, when we talked to Coach Healy before the game, he mentioned they had none of it last week either. A lot of bad puck luck for them, a lot of great puck luck for their opponents, and it's kind of the same story tonight. A lot of great puck luck for A&M. NC State possesses off the draw. Can't hold the zone, though. Cowan shovels it back in, and NC State will get back to the forecheck. Emery Oliver into pressure. Pass around the wall, kept in by Robinson on the far side. Again, the Aggies retreat behind their own cage. Now it's Matthew Fillick looking across. Pass stolen by Oliver in the high slot. He'll spin away from pressure. Lost his footing, though. And AM looks to clear. Held in by Cowan at the blue line. Bresingham bodied up with Fillick down below the goal line. Emery Oliver in to help out as well in a four-man scrum that includes Matthew Perry. Now it squirts loose. Pass out in front. Robinson, quick shot. He hit Bressingham with it, and it didn't get to the goal. Another chance for NC State by the wayside. Back to the blue line. McConaughey has his shot deflected. Robinson throws it out in front, bouncing puck in the slot. NC State can't get the shot away, and now a transition chance for Nicholas Leone. He'll step around the defense. Leaves it off there for Chen, who chases it down the far corner, sends it back to the circle, and the one-timer from Perry, handled by Toyer. That's the first shot in a while that Isaac Toyer has faced. 17 minutes left in this one. We played 43. NC State with 30 shots. None of them have gotten past the goaltender, Jake Circus. Norwood behind the goal for AM, trying to center it. That's denied by McEnany, who comes away with it for the ice pack. Looking up the near wall for Daniel. He's dispossessed. Swatted right back in by Daniel Dufresne of Texas AM. NC State will look to break out the other way. Once again, it's Dufresne getting to it at the blue line and holding the zone. Keeping on the pressure, Cade Willis sent out in front, getting a stick to it. Toyer directs it back behind where McEnany can try to find some space. Really struggling with it. You get a look up close, but NC State will finally find some space to break out. Cowan across the blue line to Daniel, looking back to the middle. That pass blocked. Big hit from Cowan on Norwood, and now we've got a penalty coming up here. Looks like it's going to go against NC State. Uh, and I'm not sure what this one's for. The puck was right there. And Cowan with uh, an earful. I mentioned we're likely going to see the A&M power play at some point. Not so sure on the interference there. I thought Labrizzi was in the play right there with the puck. Cowan just ran through him. But NC State with their first minor penalty of the game and a crucial penalty kill for the ice pack. It's one of those bang-bang plays, and I would have liked to see them kind of let it go because the puck was kind of loose still. It was still anyone's puck. and I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of that call right there, but big power play for A&M. If they can find the back of the net here, it is going to be a mountain to climb for NC State to get back in this one. Oh, yeah, Ice Pack going to be aggressive here on the penalty kill. Labrizzi with a solo break in. Circles behind the net with it under some pressure. He's just going to send it deep and retreat. So NC State kills some time there. Wouldn't be surprised. Down to about 15 minutes, a little bit more left in this game. NC State has to take some chances even when they're down a man. Just trying to generate some momentum They'll get back to defend here. Norwood over to Perry. Pressured there by Arini. Again, it's Norwood over to the top of the near circle. Centering pass from rushing intended for Burdett, but NC State gets to it and clears. Norwood spins it back up the ice. Perry looking rink wide. Turning for it was rushing. He'll have to leave it off. NC State doing a good job here on the penalty kill so far. They're halfway through it. Norwood breaks in. Looking across the ice, that pass tipped up in the air. A&M will hold the zone. Zach Colson now. Back to the blue line. He's got Norwood. Fires away. Blocker save made by Toyer as he directs it into the far corner. A&M still with the pressure. Norwood again. That one over the crossbar and off the glass. One-timer off the rebound from 
on the goal line over in that far corner. Fanned on, and now the NC State penalty kill clears it. And this is a really good Texas A&M power play team. We talked to Coach Gary Russell before the game. He mentioned this is one of their biggest strengths of this team is that power play. And going up against a really good penalty kill that NC State has, something has to give. And with just 15 seconds on the power play, it seems like NC State is going to get a huge kill here. And if they can use that as momentum, that is going to be massive. Big hit from Bresingham. Knocks a man down. That's the goal scorer, Sowers. And the puck sent deep. NC State getting pressure on as the penalty kill runs out. So NC State kills their first penalty of the Ooh. game. And they're going to get away with one there. Nick Shook upended Robbie Sowers. And A&M not happy about that. Ethan Chen going after him. Sowers still down on a knee. He took a couple of heavy hits there. I... Uh, you know, we talked about that first penalty on Cal, and he thought maybe not interference. Ice Pack probably got away with one there. Nick Shook coming in aggressively. I don't think he was looking to upend Sowers mm -hmm. the way he did, but he comes in aggressively and takes him out at the ankles, and I think that's exactly what Sowers right now talking to the officials about because it could very well be looking at another mm -hmm. power play. And while NC State did a good job killing the last one, if you're A&M, it is good to get another goal. Another penalty on NC State would be two minutes mm -hmm. where they really probably wouldn't be under too much duress in their own end. Yeah. So NC State really <laughs> fortunate to avoid that penalty. Yeah, and from my vantage point, it happened right in front where we sit. Nick Shook kind of gave a bit of a hip check, and it was a very long hip check, which kind of upended um, Ricky Robbie Sowers. So NC State back in the offensive end going to work. Govea, Kaufman, and Shook on the ice. Kaufman looking to the middle, <laughs> off the stick of Shook, and A&M will clear it into neutral ice. Cox regroups at his own blue line, leaves it off for Frosch into the middle for Shook. He's going to be stood up there at the blue line by A.J. Cosman, and Shook's going to have to have his head up the rest of this game as Cosman and Shook having words, and I think they're at least one of them is going to go, if not both of them. But this is going to make things interesting tomorrow. We don't often see back-to-back -back games here at Invisalign, but this is going to be an interesting second game with the way that the tempers are boiling over just a little bit here in this third period. And if you're NC State, big opportunity. They're going to be going to the power play as Cosman. I'm not sure what for, but he will be called for the penalty, and NC State gets their fourth power play of the game. Yeah, they're going to get him for a uh, cross-check, I believe. And then A&M's very lucky this isn't five on three. There was a little bit of taunting going on uh, from one of the A&M forwards. Not sure who it was, but when you're pointing at someone from a distance and you're pointing and yapping at them, sometimes the refs do not like that pointing, and that could sometimes be a telltale sign of taunting or in sportsman-like conduct. Very big break for A&M not to be on five on three, but a big power play for the pack of five on four. Govea to take the draw up against rushing of A&M. Rushing wins it over to the side, but the clearance is held in by Cade Cox. He'll walk the blue line. Hands off for Shook. Fires away. Hits the skates of Norwood. NC State maintains control. Cox back to Shook again. Another shot. That time blocked. Steered in front. Rebound. Loose. They score. They finally find the back of the net. It's Holden Kaufman on the power play, and NC State cuts into that A&M lead. Well, it's a loose scramble in front which allows NC State to get bodies in front, which is something we've preached that they need to do, get bodies in front of the net. And that's exactly what they did there. The first line, that new first line that NC State has of Kaufman, Govea, and Shook finally pays off. And just a couple of seconds into the power play, they've cut the lead in half 2-1 to one with 13 minutes to go. And you got to use that momentum. You've been dominating this game offensively for zone time. If you can use that goal as momentum to keep pushing and be able to find the back of the net, that is going to definitely help them out coming back in this game and trying to tie it. Yeah, so NC State with the important power play goal. We mentioned coming into this period that if the Ice Pack had a man advantage, it was going to be very important to score on it. Looks like somebody may have lost a mouthpiece over our in front of the net, so they'll collect that and get ready to go. NC State with Oliver, Robinson, and Bresingham out there. A&M wins the draw, though. Poked along by Burdett. He'll go across for Sowers. Fires away. Toyer stands tall this time and holds on for a faceoff. 
But that's you know one you think deja vu a little bit there as mm -hmm. NC State's two <laughs> goals against came by Robbie Sowers from right around that area. I was thinking deja vu from two weeks ago against UNC where they had two goals and the Tar Heels answered immediately after on the faceoff from that goal. Nearly double deja vu there for the ice pack. Got to be careful. Got to, like you mentioned before in the pre or in the intermission report, you can't take a breath. And right there, NC State got away with one, I think. Oliver again on the draw against Colson for the Aggies. And Oliver wins it, but not going to matter. Not sure what the issue was there with the faceoff drop, but they'll do it again. And this is a pretty big faceoff for NC State. If they're not able to win it, which it looks like they're going to be able to get it. It would have been very bad with all the momentum A&M has sustained. Jagelski throws it right in on goal. Mm. Bressingham goes in, collides with an A&M player, and knocks him into his goaltender. The Aggies taking exception. They, I think A&M here feels a little bit like NC State's trying to, to needle them a little bit, I think, and get under their skin. And uh, whether it's intentional or not for NC State, it's working. Yeah, I don't think that one was intentional. Bressingham was just trying to slow up right in front of the goalie, and he just happened to knock over an A&M player, and the goalie was touched, which is a big no-no. you got to stand up for your goalie and your players, and I think that's why A&M took a big exception to that. Offensive zone draws just under 13 minutes left in this game. Oliver trying to win it forward unsuccessfully. Norwood will pitch fork it out. Sowers in a foot race there with Jagelski, who wins it and clears it for NC State. Ice pack. We'll get things set in their own end. Jagelski, rink wide. Perfect pass tape to tape for Oliver. He'll drag, take the shot from the top of the far circle, and whistle it high. Jagelski holds the zone. Robertson, Robinson pardon me, sends it deep. Bressingham and Brenner in there to help out as well. All the way back to the blue line. McConaughey's shot. Missed the net. Jagelski pinches, can't hold the zone. Now Sauer's going to be knocked down hard by McConaughey. And this time, NC State going to be called for a penalty. And that one, NC State getting a little over aggressive here. That's a couple times now. We saw Shook on Sauer's mm -hmm. earlier. We saw Bressingham maybe a little bit aggressive coming in when he runs into the goaltender in Circus just a moment ago. And here, McConaughey just running through Sauer's has kind of had his head down. And it'll be interesting to see. I think the officials here are going to discuss the head contact. It's, it was a little bit of an off angle from where we are. It looked like Cowan might have caught, or McConaughey, pardon me, might have caught the head of Sowers. And if they determine that, this could be a incredibly detrimental penalty to the ice pack because it could turn into a five-minute major, which does not end, which kills almost half the time you have left to mm -hmm. tie things up. And on top of that, You've got a power play in NM that has been successful this season and will get five minutes to try and score, if that's the case. Yeah, it's just not a good penalty to take either. You just got the goal back. You're still down a goal with 12 minutes to play. I get NC State playing a little more aggressive, but sometimes the aggressiveness can kind of ruin your momentum. And they've been dealing with a lot of momentum. They've been dominating, really, offense's own time. I don't think they had to be this aggressive in playing, but you go, a massive penalty and still talking about it. And it is going to be a five-minute one. So Cade McConaughey is going to head to the locker room early and a detrimental penalty that really just flips this game upside down. The potent power play for A&M is going to have five minutes straight of just an onslaught that they can do to add back to this lead. Oh, no, control off the faceoff. Nora with the shot, looking for a deflection, it appeared. Didn't get it. NC State clears the zone. Right in on goal on Circus. And he'll set it up for Perry. Backhanded behind the goal, Norwood. Back to Matthew Perry. And if you're A&M here, again, we've talked about it before, but plenty of time to try and score. Worst case scenario, though, if you're Texas A&M, in all likelihood, you go five minutes really kind of stress-free from a defensive standpoint and hold on to that 2-1 lead. But NC State really kind of compacting the amount of time they're going to have here and they're going to have to kill off this full five minutes. They've done a good job so far, though. About 45 seconds gone. Perry carries it back into the offensive zone for A&M. He'll be bodied up in that far corner by Labrizzi. Puck pops loose. Brenner looking to get control of it, but can't as they continue to scrum for it in that far corner. A&M able to control it as it comes loose. 
Turning with it on a dime, Zach Colson. Looking across, trying to connect with rushing. Pass off the mark. and m will keep the pressure on behind the goal. Colson again. Centering pass. Stolen away. Arini going to break away with it. Maybe a shorthanded chance as he's got Brenner coming too. A two-on-one for NC State. Here's Brenner. Takes the shot. Blocker save made by Circus. Great shorthanded opportunity for NC State. Down by one. That's the kind of chance you've got to take. And they gave themselves an opportunity. I was going to question, when does NC State stop clearing the puck down and kind of ru go on a rush, try to get a shorthanded chance? Sowers takes the shot. Easily handled by Toyer as a and sets up in the offensive zone. Top of the near circle, shot coming, blocked on the way through as it came off the stick of Christian Spearman. NC State clears it to neutral ice once more. Settling it, McQuaig. We talked about how he was shaken up with a shot blocked earlier. He is back for a and &M. And they will power their way in. Toyer seals up the bottom of the net, makes a pad save, and it will stay a 2-1 game for the moment. Under three minutes left on the major penalty. Shot coming from McQuaig. Big save made there by Toyer. Rebound collected by Brenner. And his clearance didn't look like it was going to get out. Pardon me, that was Cade Cox on the clearance, but it hopped the stick of the AM defenseman. And now the Aggie power play has to reset halfway through it. There's a major penalty to McConaughey. Five minutes regardless. NC State killing off a five on four here. Colson pinned up in that near corner. He'll leave it for Marshall rushing. Elevated a backhand pass back to the blue line for Norwood. And it looked like Jacob Norwood there, a little bit antsy, throws a hard pass across that's deflected up and out of play. And NC State with a little bit of a break here as the faceoff comes out of the ice pack zone. And so far on this penalty kill, like the first two power plays for A&M, NC State's PK has been the more dominant force today, and it's kind of keeping them in this game right now. Another face-off win, another clear down the ice for the pack, and we're coming up on the final two to play, and really just one chance in front of the net for A&M on this entire power play. 9.20 left in the game, just over two minutes left on the power play for the Aggies. Big hit in the neutral zone by Jagelski, but a and able to get it deep anyhow. Cowan first to it, slaps it around the wall, deflects away, and a shorthanded breakaway here for NC State. Zach Herman all alone, he scores! Shorthanded NC State with two straight, and we're tied up with 9.03 to go. Well, you mentioned puck luck, and how NC State has not been getting it. They finally get the puck luck here and for a second. I thought that puck was going to drift up and off the stick of Herman. It was riding high and up. It's been bouncing a lot tonight. He keeps it on the stick. He fires it past Circus, and the shorthanded opportunity on a bouncing puck that was not sustained and handled correctly by Jacob Norwood gives the pack two goals. Tie game with the final nine minutes to play. A minute 48 left on the penalty kill for the ice pack. But that is a massive momentum. They finally get the puck in the back of the net. And they've done it twice in the third period to tie it. So the Aggies, a little more urgency now on the man advantage. Again, it is a major penalty. So regardless of whether or not they score, the penalty will be served in full by McConaughey as NC State clears it back down again. But... Special teams, another thing we talked about having an impact. NC State, power play goal, now a shorthanded goal. They have not scored at even strength, <laughs> but doesn't matter how you do it, just matters that you do. 115 left on the power play, eight and a half left in the game, and Texas A&M comes in offsides. A&M got a little bit of taste of their own medicine there with the uh, breakaway that NC State had to get that goal. And a them, they've been dominating offensive zone, but give credit to the pack. They have not allowed many shots on this penalty kill. And it's a big reason why they had two shorthanded opportunities so far, and they still have another minute 10 to kill off. Rink-wide pass taken off the wall by Christian Spearman. He'll turn it deep for Ethan Chen. Looking out in front, they score. Uh, it didn't take long to answer. A little over 45 seconds, and it's back to a one-goal lead for the Aggies. Well, Ethan Chen just, they kind of lose him here for Texas, or excuse me, NC State. They lose Ethan Chen right in front of the net. It's just a simple pass, and it's just him and Isaac Toyer, no one in between them. He's directly in front, and that's a hard shot not to score at that point. And just like that, deja vu to two weeks ago against Chapel Hill, NC State able to tie the game up. And then just a couple seconds later, they allow the goal to give the opponent the lead. 
And the power play will continue again for another 59 seconds because of the major penalty. NC State right back where they were. 8-10 to go, 50 seconds left on the power play for Texas A&M as Herman shovels it around the wall. Arini the first to it, sweeps it back to the middle for Cade Cox. He'll look up the ice, he finds Herman. Arini breaking in, he's going to come in shorthanded. Garrett Arini fakes, shoots, and standing tall in the post was Circus to hold on. NC State with a couple of good shorthanded opportunities, including the one that they scored on. Less than 30 seconds left on the power play for the Aggies. Carrying it in, Jacob Smith. Lugs it behind the net, hands it off for rushing. Back up top for Perry. He'll fire away off the crest of the jersey of Toyer. NC State clears, and that should finish off the man advantage for AM as Herman hustling down to put some pressure on Norwood. He'll go D to D with Perry, who walks it forward. Herman coming behind, knocks it loose, and now Herman goes down. Looks like he might have caught a stick up high. And he's going to head to the bench as play continues. But it looks like a hand pass called. And that will stop things up with 7.10 to go. So quite a chaotic five-minute penalty kill for NC State. But uh, uh, comes out even. Might hurt a little bit to give up that goal after tying it up. But they do come out really no worse for the wear. No, I mean, you got to be kind of proud, too, as well. They killed off five minutes, lot one goal at the end after they got a shorthanded. You, the net was zero, but on a penalty kill like that, you'll take that any day of the week. NC State looking for the equalizer again. High slot, Govea takes the shot, deflected in on goal, and it's covered up by Circus. Kaufman was right there. And another offensive zone draw for the ice pack. Oh, Nick Shook once again right in front of the net. Gets caught in a little bit of extracurriculars after plays. Like you mentioned before, a and is going to be coming after him the rest of the game. He's got to keep his head on a swivel. And lucky for him, a and took it lightly on him there. Govea wins it backward. Quick shot from Shook. Looks like it hit the man in front and Evan McQuaig. NC State unable to put it on goal, and now A&M breaks it out. Skating forward, Leone drags around his defender, takes the shot. Pad save made there by Toyer. NC State looking to turn it back the other way. Straight through the middle, Kaufman. He's got Govea on the far side, moving in. Fires, and a save made there by Circus. Rebound ends up all the way out in neutral ice. Cowan going to carry it right back in. He's got speed around Norwood to the net, and it looked like it caught the side of the goal. NC State will hold the zone for the moment. Nick Shook spins it back in at the defense. It'll be cleared out by Morrow of Texas A&M. Stretch pass intended for Lohr. He'll deflect it in to avoid the icing call. Jacob Norwood in control for A&M for rushing. Moved forward. Morrow slaps it along. NC State takes over the loose puck. Cowan. Looking all the way across for Daniel. Missed him, but the deflected puck means no icing, and Daniel the first to it. He'll shield the puck off for McEnany. Looked back to the blue line. Thronson sends it deep. Daniel there. Forces it along. Lore can't get to it, but over on the far side, McEnany does. Has it knocked off his stick. Lore holds his own. McEnany spins to the middle. Takes the shot. Blocker save. Rebound. They score. It floats in on the second try. It's Thronson, and we're tied at three. And Andrew Thronson's first goal here at NC State, the true freshman, able to get it to go into the back of the net to tie the game back up at three. And on the, and you look back at that play, though, Thronson, it looked like had a clear shot at the goal. It got deflected and still ended up in the back of the net because, it, like you mentioned, it just floated. It kind of just stayed up in the air, and Jake Circus just could not find the puck because it was up in the air for so long. And you'll take them any way you get them. It, we're tack tied at three. So NC State has battled all the way back. They have outscored AM 3-1 this period. And they'll win the center ice draw and go right back to work. Cox weaving through the defense. Couldn't hold on to the puck. But NC State will hold his own. Bressingham off the skate of Robinson. And now the Aggies back in control behind their own net. Leaving it there is McQuaig as Cosman tries to break it out. Bouncing puck, gets into neutral ice. Ethan Chen tracks it down. He'll find Leone into the blue, inside the blue line. He takes a wrist shot, blocked by Frosch, and NC State trying to pin them in the corner. Leone behind the net now. Has it taken away by Cade Cox. He'll move it forward for Robinson. As his stick lifted, NC State able to clear the zone. Robinson again in neutral ice. NC State with numbers. Alex Robinson, or pardon me, Zach Robinson to the middle. And it's deflected wide by Oliver, who just got the tip of his stick on it. 
A&M looking to break it out. Frosch can't handle the bouncing puck. NC State retreats to neutral ice. Bresingham just Ooh. a little bit early as Robinson couldn't quite get back across the blue line. And the faceoff comes out, looks like, to center ice for this draw. I think State was back there off the offsides. It looked like they got everybody back. You just need a bit of that skate back over the blue line, and it's back on sides. I believe NC State did that. The referee will disagree. And this is going to be a faceoff on the NC State side of the neutral zone. Uh, if you're wondering why the placement of the faceoff there, it's because of where the pass that led to the offside came from. It originated from that area, so that's where the faceoff goes. A&M brings it into the zone off the draw. Back out in front, bouncing around in the blue paint, and Toyer able to track it down and cover it up. But a little bit of a scary moment there for NC State. Yeah, and especially after the last goal you got, they – or excuse me, your second goal you got, Anim took the lead right after. Now in a tie game at three, headed down as we see a bit of discussion between players after the play. But final four and a half to go. You, any chance right in front of the net is going to be scary. You've got to stay on your toes, get those bouncing pucks. One little odd bounce of the puck, and it could be a 4-3 game for either team. Draw to the right of Isaac Toyer. One to, the near, one to that far side by NC State. Chipped up and out. Arini furthers it along. Brenner going to chase it down in the corner. Guarded there by Morrow. The captain Arini into help. Puck bouncing around. Hops out to the slot. Shot. They score. The fourth of the period. Herman with his second. And it's 4-3 NC State. In the slot. It's Zach Herman right in the middle of the slot. He just finds the puck. He a little bit of a puck maggot today for his second of the game. And he just shoots it high and knocks up the water bottle off the goal. And just like that, the pack lead 4-3. to three. And like I just mentioned, a little bad bounce of the puck can result someone being down 4-3. And that's exactly what happened. And somehow, NC State's put up four in this period after having the lock on the goal. A giant wall in front of it. They're able to answer back and take the lead for the first time today. Well, something that you've mentioned once or twice on this broadcast going back to our last time here at Invisalign was NC State gave up a couple of goals right after they scored. And so you got to finish off this last four or so minutes here. Texas A&M putting the pressure on once again in the NC State zone. Ice Pack able to break it out. That pass intended for Bressingham in the middle, a little bit too long. NC State will have to regroup behind their own net. McConaughey, who took that five-minute major, Earlier on here in the third, sends it all the way around the wall and out. A&M shoots it right back in, but it ends up out of play. Faceoff will come back to neutralize. Well, the importance of that fourth goal, too. Now we're going to have to look to see if Jake Circus leaves. It seems like NC State, they kind of picked the lock off of the wall in front of the goal, and now they're able to find the back of the net with ease. It's the way the first two periods went, you wouldn't expect NC State to get four goals like this, but here we are, and they have the lead with the final 320 to go. We well, had to wonder, too, as good as some of those chances were for NC State and as many as they had, you had to wonder if maybe the floodgates would open up mm -hmm. a little bit after the first one. And that's kind of how it's gone. NC State has outscored A&M 4-1 here in the third after putting up 29 shots and not scoring at all. In the first two periods, they've scored four on 11 shots here in the third. Shot towards goal, blocked down at the defense by Labrizi. NC State will carry it out. Kaufman finds Shook. He'll walk into the high slot, shoots, pad save made, rebound there, save, and it'll be covered up. And it looks like NC State's going to have a power play, but we might have a little bit extra coming here as it looks like Kaufman got knocked into the net. But there was a hand up. And so A&M going to be killing a penalty here as Ethan Chen is headed off. Yeah, it's going to be a tripping call on Ethan Chen right in front of the net. A lot of bodies in front, and he just was whacking at the puck, trying to get it away, and sometimes you'll take a tripping penalty. But the Ice Pack are going to be on the power play for 242, or excuse me, for two minutes, and there's 242 to go. So when the power play ends, assuming A&M doesn't score, there's going to be 42 seconds left. So for two minutes... A&M's not going to be able to have six guys on the ice when they pull their goalie. That's going to be a major factor and something that you know, Gary Russell is going to have to decide is if he pulls Jack Circus during this penalty kill, if they can sustain some pressure. Uh, the other thing is if NC State can hold his own here. Mm -hmm. They don't give A&M the chance at all. 
to pull the goaltender. So they'll win the faceoff and do just that. Robinson up top for Labrizzi. Here's Herman looking to the middle. Ooh, it deflected just wide of the near post as it hit a stick in front. Herman playing catch with Oliver. Down into the near corner. Left for Herman again. Back up top for Labrizzi. Now Robinson holding on to it. Labrizzi again. Cross ice, he finds Herman. Looking to the middle, shot stopped by Circus, and he'll hold on. I'm not sure he knew where it was exactly, but with 132 left on the power play and 214 left in the game, it's another offensive zone draw for NC State. And it is not good news for Texas A&M. They did not get the puck out or in possession at all until the puck was frozen there by Circus. They've got to win this faceoff. It'll be rushing against Herman. NC State's Herman wins it backwards. NC State... Able to set up the power play again. Robinson shot blocked. He'll knock it down in the high slot, move over to the near wall. Good job by Robinson. Strong on his feet. Leaves it for Oliver. He scores! An off-angle shot. I'm not sure Circus was ready for it. What a feed there by Emery Oliver. And NC State adds to the lead. Uh, it probably was Robinson on the feed, Oliver on the finish, but a heck of a goal to add to the lead. Yeah, Zach Robinson just drops it off for Emery Oliver, and he's got the entire side of the net. And when you're in that angle and there's no one in front of you, you can hit the upper part of the net on the glove side, and that's exactly what Emery Oliver did. A great pass from Z-Rob. It's 5-3 ice pack with two to play. A&M will get that fifth player back on the ice, but down two, as they call a timeout, uh, with two minutes to play. That is detrimental. Five goals this period for the Ice Pack. Like you mentioned, Chris, the floodgates have finally opened for the Pack, and we're finally seeing that offense click in an offense that only scored five goals in three games last week. They've got five goals in a period tonight. Yeah, and NC State, at this point, uh, you feel pretty comfortable with a two-goal lead, but at, at this point it becomes all about being disciplined defensively and finishing off this game, closing it off. One thing that we've talked about this season, a little bit more last season, was you know, some struggles they had finishing games with a lead. Mm -hmm. They've done a pretty good job this year of staying composed in all scenarios, so I'd expect that again here. The question is, what does Texas A&M do? Down two with just two minutes left. Are they going to pull Circus immediately, or are they going to wait to get possession in the offensive zone? I think if you're A&M, you've got to – get possession first because one more goal and it's pretty much over. They, that's what they are going to do. They're going to let Circus go back into the crease for a little bit. The problem is can A&M defensively, if NC State gets into the offensive zone, can they get the puck back, maintain it, and break out? If they cannot, they're not going to have a chance coming back in this game unless they get a breakaway. Uh, and A&M does win the draw. Norwood will gain the red line and send it deep. You can already see Circus partway out of the net. He's going to go here if Texas A&M gets control. It'll be cleared into the NC State bench, and that will be the cue for Circus as it's going to be six on five from here on out. Now Gary Russell, the head coach for Texas A&M, looked like he was about to hop on the ice the <laughs> way he was calling for Circus to come. Big faceoff coming up for A&M. They want to stay in this one and try to come back. McEnany to take the draw for NC State. It's at Colson for Texas A&M. They win the draw. Sowers, who has two of the three goals, takes a shot from the blue line. It'll be popped up off a stick and at a play behind Isaac Toyer. Faceoff going to stay in the NC State zone with 143 to go. Well, if you're A&M, once you get this faceoff, you might just have to start ripping it right away. You might just have to say, hey, we got to put the puck on the net. We're not going to be able to get those high-quality chances. We're on a time crunch, and we're down two. We got to go now. This time Oliver on the draw against Colson. Colson won it too well, out of the zone, in fact. And NC State going to put some pressure on Norwood. Ooh, Ooh, collision in the middle of the ice. Couple players go flying. Play carries on. Sowers down that left wing. Throws it off the side of the goal. NC State able to swat it out of the zone with 122 to go. Norwood regroups at his own blue line. He'll step through the middle. Finds a lane inside the blue line. Fires a shot aggressively. It's padded away by Toyer. NC State unable to clear, though. Back behind the net. Swept all the way out and just wide of the goal. That was Cade Cox. I'm not sure if the intent was to go with the goal or not, but it'll be icing, and NC State has to come back down to their zone with 103 to go. 
You know, Marshall Rushing coming back out for Texas A&M. They've got to get their top goal scorers and point getters out on the ice right now. A minute three to go. You've got to get one in the next 20, 30 seconds or else your chances are slim to none. Colson has been the best faceoff man for A&M. He'll win the draw back to Rushing, who throws it right into the glove of Toyer for another faceoff. NC State now will get a chance to change things up. And this is where things will get a little bit interesting. Herman, generally speaking, the best faceoff man for this NC State team. So it'll go best on best here. And it's Herman with the win for NC State. Swept around behind the net for Cade Cox. He's going to avoid a check. And Sowers takes a hard fall over on that far side. Not exactly sure how he went down. But the puck will be thrown out of play. And another faceoff next to Isaac Toyer with 50 seconds left now. Might have been a little bit of friendly fire there almost. The way A&M was playing aggressive, trying to get that puck back. I think that might be the reason why Robbie Sowers took a hard hit and went down there. And again, Colson and Herman on the draw. And well, ready for the faceoff. They're going to reset things just before. This time it's Colson. One timer swallowed up by Toyer as Sowers fired away. And we'll do it all again. But about two seconds run off the clock there. If you're NC State, if you can get the puck out of your zone one or two more times, you'll be feeling pretty good. Now it's Arini on the faceoff. Again, Colson wins it. Bouncing puck, though, hard to corral for the Aggies. They'll chip it deep. Colson knocks it down behind the net. He's dispossessed by Labrizzi, who sweeps it up to the blue line. Norwood holds it in. Puck tangled up in some skates near the high slot. Leone comes away with it, looking cross ice. Turnaround shot from Sowers, unsuccessful as he falls to the ice. Now Herman will move forward, but I think we got a penalty coming up here on NC State. As the whistle comes, the signal is cross-check, and the guilty party is going to be Garrett Arini, the captain. Oh, Zach Herman was about to put the game away. And he threw his hands up. An, oh, no, a little bit of the surrender cobra position. And a and 28 seconds. You never know. They're going to have an extra two men out there now, six on four. So they got a lot of space to work with offensively. They've got to get it in quickly, though, if they want to pull off the miracle. Big draw here. NC State controls. Labrizzi smacks it out into neutral ice. A&M has to check up here. Sowers looking to the middle. That pass disrupted. Cleared all the way down by Bressingham with 17 seconds to go. Amory Oliver disrupts the stretch pass, sends it towards the goal. With 10 seconds to go, Norwood will reset. Looking long up the ice. Labrizzi gets in the way. This one goes all the way down. Toyer comes out to play it, and that is going to run out the clock. What a comeback from NC State. They were down 2 nothing coming into the final period. Battled back to tie it. Gave up another, and then scored three more to come away victorious. Well, when you look at the stat sheet later tonight, you're going to see... NC State 5-3 victory, a lot of offense his own time, 43 shots, but you're not going to know the true story. A team that has been struggling offensively, once again struggled the first two periods of this game, but when it came to the third period, they found the pick to the lock and the floodgates opened. Five goals in the third period matches what they had all of last week in three games, and Going into tomorrow, NC State needs to use this third period momentum kind of into using it saying, hey, we scored five goals third period last game. Let's keep it going this game. Let's get that offense going and rolling because we've got to wake up. And I think that third period today is a good example of it waking up. Yeah, so a big, big comeback win for NC State. Most importantly, they finally started to find the back of the net in the third period. It's a five-goal third period. That's the difference. NC State. Comeback winners over Texas A&M, 5-3. We'll be back with postgame. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in, roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning, from baby steps to 
big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment, a fresh chance to seek answers, connection, purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be stopped. NC State. Think and do. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. This safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. What a comeback. NC State, 5-3 winners over the Texas A&M Aggies. Chris Lehman, Nick Prozzi back with you after a dominant third period from NC State outscoring the Aggies 5-1 to one to come away with a 5-3 win. Nick, we talked about it all game. NC State was doing the right things. They were getting the puck to the net. They weren't getting the bounces, and then all the bounces came in the third. Yeah, and I think this third period, going back to the struggles last week and the struggles the first two periods away, that was a season-defining period, I think. They're at a big crossroads. They were down 2 nothing. If they lose this one, it's four straight, and they're losing to a team that's lost their last four or five in a row that would drop NC State more than likely to last place in the division so being able to pick up a win especially in that third period in a game they really outplayed A&M except on the goal and the scoreboard for basically the entire game that is a massive win and the boys have a lot to be proud about and we heard them when they came back up to the locker room they were loud <laughs> well it was a tough period for mm -hmm. Isaac Toyer not in the fact that he gave up too much in terms of goals but he only faced five mm -hmm. shots through the first two periods he faced 15 in the third period stopped 14 of them a lot of credit goes to him as well to keep NC State in the game and then when they had the lead to keep it that way yeah and I think the three goals Isaac Toyer allowed you know you can't put really much if any blame on him two breakaway chances there for Texas A&M for the first two and the third one A&M had a player right in front of the net it was an easy goal for them so I think when you go back to Torrey's performance you got to look just deeper than the stat sheet look about how about the goals that he allowed and how he allowed them and you'll kind of see that okay he did stop actually a lot of good breakaway chances A&M had he didn't stop two of them and one of them was a power play goal right in front I think there's a lot to be proud of now tonight for Isaac Toyer. Yeah, NC State certainly in the right spot going into tomorrow's game. And tomorrow, going to be interesting. <laughs> Things got a little bit heated. I think NC State we could see getting aggressive as they were still down two almost halfway <laughs> through that third period. They got a little aggressive. A&M responded, so it should make for an interesting contest tomorrow. Yeah, especially Nick Shook. He was <laughs> in a lot of those battles. As well as Cade McConaughey, who took that five-minute major penalty. A couple of names to look out for tomorrow. Maybe they get a little bit of extracurriculars after the play. For Texas A&M, Jacob Norwood early on was a big pest into NC State. He was getting underneath their skin. 
Nebraska, and they were getting a little furious with them. He kind of went away as the game went on. Maybe it was a little bit of that fatigue since he was out there so much the first period. When you go into tomorrow's game, a period like that from NC State, it needs to be a big motivation and propel them into an early start tomorrow. Well, we heard the boys coming off the ice very, very happy <laughs> with the win that they've come away with. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we'll have Zach Herman to talk to. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. It's time to talk about men's mental health. 80% of suicides are done by men. Men are three times less likely to ask for help if they are struggling. One man every minute commits suicide. Men are more likely to suffer from substance abuse disorders. Alcohol kills six times more men than women. Men are three times less likely to ask for help if they are struggling. We've never needed each other more than we do right now. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to talk about how you feel. Being silent doesn't mean you're being strong. This is a movement for men's health. The silence needs to be broken. Men need support too. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma. The stigma, the stigma ends here. The stigma ends here. Back in Invisalign Arena, I'm here with the man that has the game-winning goal tonight, Zach Herman. Two goals on the night as well, all in that third period. Going into that third period, down 2 nothing. You guys kind of outplayed Texas A&M tonight, going into th to that third period. What were the thought process about how to open up that gate to the goal and let the floodgates open? Yeah, no, we definitely uh, were playing well in the first two periods. I mean, we had 30 shots through two periods, which is, you know, definitely something you want to see. Uh, I think it was about just getting closer to the net, you know, kind of getting in the dirty areas. And, um, you know, I think we had a lot of outside shots, but, you know, goalie was making some good saves, so we had to get in close. Yeah, and a lot of puck luck did not go your guys' way. It did go your way, though, in that third period. Going into that game-winning goal, kind of talk us through about how you got that goal and how big that goal was to this team. Yeah, um, you know, puck kind of just, you know, good forecheck. Puck just kind of popped down the middle there and, you know, just put it towards the net. Good things happen. Um, you know, in the last, you know, couple weekends, we feel like we've been playing good hockey, but unfortunately, you know, haven't, haven't been getting the results we want. So it's, it's nice to get one going our way. And I mentioned it before, right before you came on, this period, going back to last week and the struggles you guys had, being able to come back and score five this period, bit of a season-defining period for you guys to keep up in the standings, yep. to get a massive win going into tomorrow. Another, back, another game against Texas A&M, a back-to-back with them tomorrow here at Invisalign Arena. We saw a lot of chippiness going on. What's going to be kind of the game plan tomorrow with a big period like that? Yeah, definitely expect tomorrow to be physical. I mean, no team, no team likes getting... Uh, you know, losing the game after being up like that. So, you know, you know, they're going to come out hard and, uh, you know, statement game tomorrow. So we got to We got to get another one. Well, Zach Herman scored two of the five goals. If you go to the Cameron Village Moe's tomorrow, you can get 10 percent off of your order. We'll be back with our final round of interviews and coach Tim Healy after this. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning. From baby steps to big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment, a fresh chance to seek answers, connection, purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled, it's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, 
you can't be stopped. The lessons learned here don't end with graduation. A great university goes far beyond campus. It allows you to see the big picture. A great university gives you tools. Community. Partnership. A launch pad. You don't just go to NC State University. You take us with you. We talk forever about the future. Worry about it or wish it closer. We try to glimpse the places we'll go. From ocean depths to the far side of the moon. At NC State University, the future is a thing you make. With bright ideas, new tools, and a wolf pack behind you. Tell us where you're headed. We'll help you get there. NC State. Think and do. Chris Lehman back with head coach Tim Healy of the Ice Pack. An incredible comeback win outscoring Texas A&M 5-1 for a 5-3 win here tonight. Coach, we talked a little bit before the game. It was a little bit frustrating last weekend. Things just didn't bounce your way. Seemed like it was the exact same thing through two periods. So how good does it feel to come out in the third and finally get things going? Oh, you, you have no idea. I mean, just, <laughs> just how it drew it up. Five goal third period. You know, and it, it's frustrating because we were doing things, you know, we were in a three game losing streak, right? And if you're not playing well and it's not going well, that's one thing. But we had been playing well, right? Yep. And you know, little things here and there, right? The there was a breakdown on their second goal would not having a third guy high, the first one in face off. But like, you know, we just weren't getting any puck luck any which way. Yep. And it felt really good to see and create some of your own luck in the third. Um, you know, it's great shorthand at you know, that goal by Herman seemed to energize the bench and um, yeah, it, it was it was a <laughs> it was a gritty third period, but uh, it was a weird way to get there, but we'll take it. <laughs> Well, as someone who probably didn't get nearly as much attention tonight just because of the dominance you had in terms of puck possession, shots on goal, is your goaltender, Isaac Toyer. It's a tough first period. He doesn't see a lot of shots, and the two that get past him are really good shots. What can you say about the way he's able to play, to buckle down in that second period and in the third? Well, you know, there's a certain sense of mental toughness too, right? Like mm -hmm. you give up two on three or four shots, whatever it yep. was in the first. You don't, you know, no goal. No goalie is going to feel good about that, yeah. no matter how the shots are. And I, and I was a goalie. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then you still don't get a lot of action in second. I think two mm -hmm. shots in the second. And then in the third, right, they had a five-minute power play. So suddenly, you know, you don't you get called upon to do a lot. When you mm -hmm. did, you're pulling the puck out of you, out of the net. And so how do you have that mental fortitude to raise up in the third period? And that's exactly what he did. And, and he did a great job in that third when, we, when he was getting some shots and we really needed him. So what was the message to the team after that third period in the locker room? Uh, you know, some things that probably, you know, <laughs> Eric Muir actually took kind of the lead on that one. Uh, but it was to play tougher, be harder to play against. You know, too many, that goalie was good. You know, too many shots that he was able to see. Um, and... You know, you have two ways. You can hang your head and feel sorry for yourself, or you can come out and play a passionate period uh, and be hard to play against, and that's what they did. Chris Lamb alongside head coach Tim Healy of the Ice Pack. Coach, one last question for you, because you do play the Aggies again tomorrow night, 7.45 p.m., puck drop. Things got a little hot in that third period, as you kind of would expect in a tightly contested game. And A&M, obviously, you look at a record of 3-9-1, and one, much better than their record shows. What do you expect out of tomorrow? I expect pr pretty similar games of tomorrow, right? They're gritty, uh, you know, uh, what's his name there? 43. Um, he's he's a terrific player. He's a goal scorer. Um, we got to keep him bottled up. So, you know, they do have some talented guys that can make you pay, uh, and we have to make sure we keep them bottled up tomorrow. And we knew that coming into it. You know, we had a great scouting report on him. We knew he was a talented player, and, and we let him get by us twice, and he made us pay. Well, we do want to remind you, since NC State scored five goals here tonight, you can get some free queso at the Village District Mows over by campus. Maybe if you're going to tailgate the game tomorrow, pick up some free queso. Just head in, say queso goal, get some free queso with your meal. NC State, big comeback win, 5-3 over Texas A&M. We'll see you tomorrow night. Go Pack. All right, thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks for giving up your Friday. I gotta go home and get to sleep. Oh yeah, yeah, I made sure it was in time. I would not miss this.